Hi guys, Ryan Higgins here from Mind Movies, and I'm very excited because I'm about to go to John Asaraf's house. Now, this is the famous um, house that he mentioned in The Secret, that was, that was the beginning of his manifesting, but I'm really excited because what we're going to be talking about is the specifics about the science of visualization and the law of attraction and how it works. So let's go chat to him. I'm very excited today because I happen to be at uh, Mr. John Asaraf's house. So thank you very much for welcome, welcoming me to your home. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Now, many of you will uh, recognize John from uh, the movie The Secret and lots of other areas in personal development. And John, you have been not just applying, you've been doing that for far longer, but really studying the science behind visualization, why it's so powerful and why it works for over a decade now. Now, you have a very uh, famous story uh, with regard to the power of your manifesting abilities, and we're actually sitting here at, at your house, which is uh, a big part of it. Why don't you just recap for everybody exactly that story for you, how you achieved that? Well, since 1980, I've been writing goals on paper. Uh, I've been laminating them uh, when I can, so I can have goals for my health and wealth and relationships and money and charity and contribution. And then in the um, early 90s, I was introduced to creating vision boards. I used to cut out pictures of cars, homes, watches, charities, girls, um, money, everything that I wanted to achieve in health, wealth, relationships, career, business, spirituality, contribution. And I would just look at those every day for just a few minutes. And I would just look at my goals and look at the image, and look at my goals and look at the image, and look at my goals and read them. And what I also used to do was look at them while I was listening to them while I was looking at the picture. So I created ah. some, some different processes for me just to be able to really feel you know, what that would be like. And so back in 1995, I started to really do that process. And I used to sit for two to three minutes a day and just do that little exercise of really feeling the goal, feeling, acting as if those things were mine, that was my life. And I, I acted like a Hollywood actor would, would assume a role that he or she was going to, going to act to win an Academy Award. That's how I pretended. Yep. And what I didn't know was what I was actually doing neurologically at the time. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is uh, I did that for several years. And I was living in Indianapolis, Indiana at the time. And we were going to move to Vancouver, British Columbia, and then um, yeah, we put all of our stuff in storage. Okay. And then when I moved to San Diego, and we bought the home that we're sitting in right now, I called the United Van Lines and said, hey, bring all my furniture to San Diego. And all the furniture was brought, and all the boxes were laid out around the house. And one morning, uh, just up the way there in my home office, uh, the boxes that the movers had brought in the day before were laying against the ledge of my home office and my son who was five and a half at the time he'll actually be 15 here shortly so 10 years ago basically um, came in sat on the boxes and, and asked me he was banging on the boxes with his feet he asked me daddy what's in the boxes so we got a, a, a scissors we cut the tape from around the boxes tore the top of the box off pulled out the first board they're about that big and about that high and on them were the different pictures of things that I wanted to achieve. And the first board had a nice car on it that I bought, and then uh, you know, some trips and stuff like that. And so I started to explain to him the power of creating a vision, and the power of looking at it, and the power of seeing it, and the power of feeling it. And as I pulled out the second board, at first I was, I was stunned, because something unique happened. And in the middle of the board is a picture, uh, actually two pictures, of a home. And I didn't know at first how in the world did this picture get into the board because these boxes have been sealed for years, for three years. And at that moment, something really unique happened to me. I had an epiphany. I had a, an epiphany, I call it, of biblical proportions because on the board was a picture of this house. So not a house like it. A picture of the house that I'm living in right now and that I was living in 10 years ago. Actually, this shot with the pool. Well, exactly. it, was, it was a different, yeah, little, yeah from, from that angle over there. But what had happened is first I was in shock, and then I was, oh my God, I was so elated because all of the disciplines that I that I'd done over the years of affirmations and visualization and meditation and, and creating my own you know, vision board, it all came together you know, because I'd studied quantum physics and, and, and the power of our thoughts. I'd studied the neuroscience field for a little bit, but not to the extent of what I was about to do for the, fall, the last 10 years. 
But this picture just brought everything into place for me. And and I, I asked myself a couple of questions. Number one was, is this happening all the time in our lives? And as tears rolled down my face, Keenan said to me, he says, Dad, why are you crying? And I said to him, I said, Sweetheart, I think I finally understand how we manifest, okay, and how we create and how we achieve our goals or not achieve our goals. And he really didn't understand, but I became very, very, very elated, number one. Uh, the first person I called was my friend Bob Proctor. I said, Bob, you're not going to believe this. And I called him up. He says, you have to write this story down so that we can you know, share it. And so I wrote the story down and I sent it to him. And he was like, wow. Yeah. And because, you know, I mean, what do you think of, I was living in, in Toronto and Montreal and Vancouver and L.A. before. I, I never even thought I'd be in Rancho Santa Fe, California. You've never actually been here when you never selected been. those photos. Never you just found here. them on the net somewhere. Well, actually, I found it in Dream Homes magazine. I cut it out of Dream Homes magazine, yeah. and all I thought to myself was one day when I could live anywhere I want, no matter what city, what state, what country it is in, and I could buy any house I want. It'll look like that. I never, ever said that I will live in that house. Mm -hmm. All I felt and experienced was one day I'll buy a house like that. Because I like ultra modern, and I like you know I just like the look of it, mm -hmm. and so everything that occurred, you know, from that moment on, was really a miracle in the fact that there are scientific explanations to what happened, and one thing I do know for certain is that there are no accidents and there are no coincidences, uh, but there's a lot of mystery around the science behind it. And today, you know, scientists are trying to prove with theologians and spiritual masters and teachers have said all along. And mm -hmm. we're seeing a really beautiful convergence of science and spirituality. So you've had a very personal experience with visualization, which yeah. is awesome. And that led you onto a journey yeah. which was studying the, um, the, the science and the mechanics of why visualization and, and that works. You touched on a little bit. Would you, would you go into a little bit more be detail about why visualization works and how it affects every single person? It's the repetitiveness of visualization with the associated emotion mm. that works. And so, it's just like words. Words on their own really don't word, work unless there's meaning and emotion behind it. Mm -hmm. And so, if I called you a, a name, okay, if I didn't have the inflection of emotion behind it, it may not have the power. Mm -hmm. And so, from a visualization perspective, if it's true that our brains are using the majority of the brain for, for, for visual processing, then it would also mean that if we want to ingrain an image in our brain, then emotionalizing it creates an association to the vision. And then if we repeat that over and over and over again, then we're going to create something known as a neural network or a software program of that image. And if we create that software program of that image with an emotion behind it, then what we're doing is, is firing the neurons, the brain cells, in the same sequence over and over and over again. And as we visualize, what we're doing is firing those neuron sequences over and over again, and we actually reduce the threshold of those neurons firing. Now, mm -hmm. that's a scientific way of saying that the more we do something, the easier it is for us to do. And the easier it is for us to do the more your brain will do it because it becomes addicted to the emotion of the repetition. Right. Okay, so the formula is visualization plus emotion, emotion. times by repetition. You got it. Is the formula. Okay. Now that explains to me why, um, why we, we want to and move in a direction that we move into and, and, and why we're drawn in certain directions. Okay. What, I, what I'm still learning is what's the flip side of that in that so you'd never been to Rancho Santa Fe. You didn't know that this house existed. You didn't know your house existed. How did you? How did the universe conform to deliver you in this space, <laughs> even though you personally had never experienced that this was here or, or knew that you had to be here? Right. How does that work? Well, we're dealing with a highly intelligent, self-aware universe. If you think about what's going on here, if you think about you know the planets moving around the sun, the sun moving in its orbit around black holes. If you think about the protons and electrons and quarks, everything is working in perfect order and harmony in an intelligent universe that responds not to our, uh, not to our thinking, not to our words, but responds to emotion. Responds to emotion. And so if I was feeling 
and acting as if you know this home is already mine the lifestyle that I live is already mine the universe is going to match and 